They well, reference the first theme in the new theme. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, they also did that in the ending of part one of season three. Just like we did right here on Canton! Canton! Titan Week specifically. Oh, Subscribe wait. Star. You should give us $10 on Subscribe Star. And also. Oh, it's, I know it's coming. I know it's coming! Ah! Good for lives! It's Titan! Hey kids, want to impress your friends and induce sexual arousal in your neighbors? Canton T-shirts! Wow, I've never been more impressed in my life with anything! Canton now has official T-shirt merchandise and you can get yourself some by clicking below the video or in the Teespring link in the description. With designs like the classic Canton logo. Or this! I've got a shirt on too. Or this! Can! Stand. And right now, get yourself the I Survived Titan Week t-shirt. Unless you don't want to survive Titan Week, but hey, that's between you and Jesus. They're a great way to support the show and share your Canton pride. So get out there, wear them, and get into Canton. We're back, boys and girls. Oh, We're in man. part two of season three. Oh boy. This, we watched five episodes for this one because of the way Titan Week is structured. And this was a full, we thought that this might be 10 episodes of the battle. This was basically the entire battle. And it was some of the hypest shit ever in the game. I didn't know we were gonna be watching Gundam 0080 again. I. Yeah, absolutely true. The logic was kind of there. The hype was there. The Christmas spirit was there. Uh, you know, and Beast Titan looks a little bit like... This guy looks like Santa. A little bit. And the ham... Everyone was turned into hamburger. No, in quite actually the same terms as in uh, Gundam 00. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go watch our bonus episodes. Uh, $10 to subscribe star. Then so you get the jokes on multiple levels. You'll, get, you'll understand that joke. So here, here's our thing. End of, I mean, I, I get why they split it at this point now, because end of part one of season I'm three. I'm thinking about the fact that I'm literally having burgers for dinner tonight. All I'm going to be thinking about <laughs> About is these fucking... boys having a bad day out there. Uh, they were they were really ground to ground beef. So, last we saw our heroes, they were, they were riding. It was mission time, let's go. Last episode, emotional stakes. Oh, we're all ready to go. It has begun. Right at the beginning of these episodes, we we have a little bit of like, oh, we're nervous. What's going to happen? They get to the wall right away. No fucking around. No. They're there. Aaron plugs it right away, too. Right which away. Is great, because, like, we already had the arc of will he plug a wall. Don't need that. I, the very beginning of, of episode 13 of, of season three here now, uh, like, there was a little bit of, like, Armin and Aaron both being like, am I going to have the courage? My hands are shaking. I was thinking, like, aren't we past this now? Jesus Christ. But at least they do. They reference again, like, it's only been four months since we were totally right. green. So I can at least appreciate a little and bit of I that. I have to assume, like, two of those months, because wasn't there, like, a two-month time skip after Just recently, Historia yeah. became yeah. queen? So, like... So, really, it was two months of stuff and then yeah. nothing after that. I uh, guess of Aaron practicing hardening and stuff. Yeah, yeah they did a... They definitely... It feels like, how long were they under Levi's training for? Like, I don't know. It feels a, like it a couple been. weeks, maybe? I guess they just got real good real fast. You have to. You know, yeah, in, in yeah. This situation. But you know, it, it works well to this because some new things appear, and that gap of time is, it's a bit short, I guess, to develop all these new things, but it's long enough in anime terms to be like, I understand why new things were made in this batch of time. So, having gotten to the walls, uh, we, we had seen at the end of like the last preview, like Reiner was waiting on the wall with some with some new lads, and uh, including one guy we hadn't seen before. And now we're at the wall. Our the first hole is plugged. So, oh my God! If this if nothing else changes, we've just saved Wall Maria, and if we just clear out the Titans in there, we'll have that land back. Holy shit! Um, but before we do that, we have to find our enemies who are hiding. So we gotta search the landscape. Are they high? Are they low? Are they buried? Are they in the town? 
Armin has a brain blast idea that I don't understand why he thought this had to be the case. You know, we saw them on top of the wall. That sure seems like a good vantage point. What if they're in the wall, like where Titans right. are sometimes? Uh, okay, fine. They were, in fact, in the wall, or at least one yeah. of them was. Well, I think he sees a hole in the wall, and then that's what sparks him to think, oh, they must be in there because we don't see them anywhere else. Sure, sure. Makes sense. I don't know exactly what they were biding their time for. Like, why not just burst out as soon as they get a chance to snatch Aaron? But whatever. It doesn't matter. And Reiner's the first one discovered. In a, man, I feel so bad for that guy who was doing arm and strat, tapping the wall, finds a soft spot, opens it. Oh, my God, guys, Aaron's here. Well, bam, right through the chest. Great way to start off our battle. And that really will be the spirit of things going forward, of massive amounts of casualties, horrendous yeah. violence being ground into fucking dust. Yeah. Oh Literally, my god. There's, there's, a, there's a moment where there's just a, a miasma of blood seemingly hanging over the atmosphere of the battle I, from this point forward. I was thinking, that is so much blood for there to be yeah. this much red mist over the entire battlefield here. Uh, and yeah, so it was. Sick. So, I mean, first first thing that happens, Reiner here, turns Armored Titan, let's fight. Right. Well, we've got, like, I mean, that's that's really at the start of episode two. Oh, yeah. So, like, uh, the whole first episode is mostly just, like, kind of establishing the battlefield and everything. And uh, I like how, how much there is of just shots of the whole town, lots of overhead, lots of uh, going around and surveilling the area, just because it establishes this battlefield extremely well. Yeah, And there's yeah. a lot going on in this battle. Because, so much density in yeah. this town. And there's the other like really nice element of, this is the town where it all began. We're right. back home, baby. It's time to fight and to the finish. You know, we've got everybody kind of wandering around. Aaron's mm -hmm. like, this is the spot where this happened. Like, this is my hometown. Keeps remembering the mom getting eaten and everything. There's this very nice, uh, like, dim atmosphere to the sky where like mm. you know we've had these very pale blue skies all throughout the series but this one's like a little bit more dramatic a lot of clouds yeah. and uh it looks really great just the whole setup of the arena because you know thinking back to like the first major battle in season one mm. took place within the walls and felt super cramped and like yeah, yeah. you could never really tell what was going on character like the sense of direction or like where things were happening relative to one another was deliberately confusing yeah, so you could yeah. have moments where characters look through the window of a building and see another guy doing something and they're like oh shit you know i think and that was that was intelligently done at the beginning to be yeah. like we are you know as far we didn't know anything about titan shifters then right the scale was like these lowly humans trying to defeat titans yeah. and even ones that are like three meter talls are a serious threat and will instantly kill you if they just get one good hit yeah but now we're more on the level of like titan v titan fighting so we're we're scaled and up it, it creates this sensation of like because our heroes know the whole playing field field and um, you know and we do as well it seems almost like this must be a level playing field like we're on equal terms like we've got Titan shifters we've got mm -hmm. technology uh, what do they got you know we've got all the best fighters we're here to fucking just end this thing once and for all mm -hmm. but of course as soon as the battle begins and like they're surrounded by Titans you got Beast Titan you got uh, both colossal and armored. Well, I mean, it's a step-by-step -step process. I, I really appreciate the like military strategy point here that, of course, is obvious, but, okay, we need to actually know where all our enemies are. Reiner is the first one that appears. He goes armored titan mode, and then immediately after, there's the tremendous reveal of on the horizon. But, yes. but, 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 like, a thousand titans clearly go titan mode? Are they all shifters? What is this implying exactly, including the beast titan who's who's leading them? Uh, and, of course, that leaves the question of, where's Bert? Where's, like, do they have more allies? There was that one guy we saw on the rafter last half of the season. Right. Where are all these agents? So we, we need to keep track of all that. I wonder if he's the four-legged uh, titan with the I mean, the that seems like the obvious back. implication, yeah, yeah. So, and because th there's some importance given to that titan there. First of all, he's <laughs> one of the most monstrous-looking titans we've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, not not a good face looking uh, kind of guy, but uh, has like stuff tied to its back, clearly implying it's an intelligent titan. It can be used in strat strategic ways, which it may be used for later. Um, Such as then, throwing shit off of its back. Indeed. Which a beast titan legendarily just 
throws Bert in a barrel yeah. into yeah. the battle as a nuclear fucking bomb, which is, I guess, what it is when, a, when Colossal Titan awakens. Well, okay, point of order on that. I, I'm curious, because the first time we ever saw the Colossal Titan was, of course, episode one of the yeah. show, when it looms over the wall. I do remember seeing, maybe if I went back and watched episode one, the implication, I remember, I think, you know, I don't even think there was any lightning or anything, which we, we now know that lightning appears whenever a Titan shifts or whatever. But, like, the, the whole nuclear explosion thing when a Titan, when, when the Colossal Titan goes Colossal Titan mode, I didn't see any of that when it first did that. Is, you know, Imaishi, is this a new thing you're doing? Uh, Is-i-i- or, is that, what's his name again? Hajime Isayama. Isayama, thank you. Um, uh, is this a, a power that you've decided to give the Colossal Titan now that didn't exist before? If so... I noticed it, but I don't care because it's used in a cool way. So that's that's all fine. Yeah, it was neat. Um, so yeah, well, the battle begins with them having their lightning spears, which mm-hmm. are developed to shoot through the armored titan's neck. They're piercing uh, weapons that explode after impact. Yeah, and they yeah. want to strip the armor off of his neck, and and they do. They they functionally seem to have killed Reiner for well, they, a moment. Aaron gets Aaron had beaten Reiner before, but now they gonna get they get a rematch, not interrupted by Bert this time. Right. And Aaron, once again, having these cool new like hardening power specifically on his hands, yes, brass see, knuckles. Because style. all of his hardening is in one place. There's a strong implication that like what Titans can all do mm. is I guess just whatever part of their physical makeup they can just like shift like, yeah, um, yeah. So hardening is like moving parts into a space, and mm. since armored titans is spread out all over, none of it is as strong as just putting it all into one spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Likewise, apparently, you can move your consciousness through your nervous system. You know what? We totally skipped one of these amazing, amazing moments when Reiner first appeared, where Mikasa, or no, Levi, was got to give credit to the right person. Thank God that they do this, because it should be the thing that happens when one of these shifters appear. It would be very smart to kill them before they can turn into a titan. And Levi does successfully just put a blade straight through his fucking spinal cord and cut the man off. Luckily, Reiner transferred his consciousness into the rest of his nervous system. What the the fuck? fuck? That's not how a consciousness works. But it's also not how memory works the way that memory's been handled in this series. So, like... They're they're gonna do some bullshit with this. They don't introduce a weird power in in a fairly inconsequential scene like that if they're not gonna pull some weird bullshit with it later. And I can feel it coming. Like, someone's gonna get obliterated, but, like, a little bit of their nervous system will exist in their hand. Luckily, I stored my entire brain capacity in my hand so I can recover completely i can feel it coming i, I mean it already kind of happened with Ryder. he yeah, already yeah. did like get traditionally killed and then by the way come back this th- he transferred his consciousness to his body but but we see him he got stabbed through the neck like that severed his spinal cord he must have already transferred his consciousness before the severing but after that he like his eyes open again and then he titan shifts did his body titan shift while his head was deceased and not doing anything anymore? These are the questions we shouldn't worry about too much because it's not the point of Attack on Titan. It's, uh, I'll leave it to the doctors and the physiologists out there. Uh, point is, they can do that, and Reiner sure as heck did it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I, was, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, that blade should still be in Reiner's neck. And so, okay, you go Titan mode, you can heal, all right, that's fine. But if there's still a blade in your neck blocking the connection, how are you going to get around that? But they do, uh, thank God, they included this little shot of inside the Titan, like the musculature of the Titan is smart enough to know to pull the blade out of his neck. Uh, Or maybe this was a conscious thing that Reiner was like willingly doing with the power of the Titan. In any case, I'm glad they explained it because I was wondering about it. So it makes sense how they would heal from even wounds like that. The more you know. So, uh, as we were saying, so Eren defeats Reiner again, making him look very bitch-made at this point. Absolutely um, bitch-made. Some excellent animation of punching the fuck out of this guy and shattering the armor on his face. Uh, and as you were saying, yes, they follow up with the new introduction of these Thunder Spears. Little flashback explaining how in the two months they had, they developed these sick new weapons. All right, that's enough time. No problem. And uh, they blast the fuck out of Reiner. 
such that he is like actually dead almost. His yeah. head is literally, this guy's suffering quite a bit of damage. It's Again. worth mentioning, the lightning spears, mm. uh, like, like everything else in the series, double-edged sword, because mm. if you actually use them on a titan's neck, you will get caught in the explosion, or an explosion before you yeah. can flow, fly away. So they're not, they're kind of tricky to use, mm -hmm. and uh, they only have so many of them anyway. So it's kind yeah. of like, I, I think it's interesting that while they end up, you know, being put to other uses, mm. like their big scene is this shot, this one shot we got at Reiner doesn't even work. Motherfucker comes back to life. Yeah, it. I mean, it did. D d you know, take him out of commission for a little while so that we can focus on Bert stuff for a while. And the Bert mm. stuff was was pretty good. Yes. So so while Reiner is he's like healing, he's gonna come back. Spoiler alert: Reiner isn't dead here. Uh, this is where we get the Beast Titan grabs Bert, who you know we'd be wondering where's Bert? Where's the Colossal Titan? He was on the cart Titan in a barrel. We launched him into battlefield. You know, as the nuke that he is, uh, and. Uh, Everyone's like, oh my god, he's gonna go Titan any moment. He, he doesn't do that immediately. You know, he goes to talk to, to Reiner for a sec, check up on him, but then really we just get this, this scene where Bert, one of these agents of whatever force is controlling these people, uh, having a, an actual conversation with Armin. Yes. Uh, this is the first time they've been able to like, let's see if there's any way we could compromise here before, you know, hundreds, thousands I believe die. this comes after we have already finally gotten, before this, actually it's before the battle begins, yeah, I think. Yeah. Somewhere, or maybe somewhere at the beginning of it, mm. the Marco flashback. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we finally learn what happened with Marco. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now my speculation had been that he had gotten eaten by Aaron mm -hmm. up until the point where we found out Aaron ate his dad. Right. And right. I'm curious, was did we would we have learned what really happened earlier in the manga? Do you know? Uh, we we had not. I think there okay. were there were implications of what had happened. Um, uh, I mean. You know what's funny? I I did know his fate. You know, in the in the kind of spoiler stuff that I've consumed yeah. over the years since it's come out, uh, but I didn't get this far in the manga, so it might have been more clear in the manga. Because I think that uh, I was skimming through some interviews mm. with uh, Hajime Isayama mm. before I came over, and um, he was talking in one about how he worked with the writers on season two mm. to change certain things that he thought had that he would have changed about the manga, yeah, and yeah. he mentioned something about the Marco scene and saying that like it was still right to do the flashback at the time that he did but that mm -hmm. it's a different in the anime. So oh, okay. I don't know if you know I'm not going to I haven't read the manga yet so mm -hmm. I'm not going to speculate too much but what is interesting about how they did it in the anime is that they deliberately left it open to like interpretation what had happened to Marco right, right. so that we could feel more sorry for Reiner. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, from our perspective, not like all we know is that he saw a friend die and it broke his mind. But it's only right before we go into this final battle that we learn actually he is the one who who pulled the trigger on that. You know, yep. he's traumatized because him, Bert, and Annie killed uh, Marco. And like the last thing Marco says is like, we, we haven't even negotiated. Exactly, yeah, good so, point. So that's why Bert comes and tries to negotiate with. Well, Armin offers, I think, to negotiate with them, and the two of them have talked, but he's like, the only negotiation there is is if you're all willing to die and let humanity die, I mean, because that's what we're Bert doing. Bert does so. present two options so that they don't have to battle right now. Now, they're not really beneficial, but one, you have to turn over Eren. Two, you and seemingly every man, woman, and child inside the walls has to, like, agree to be put down. Right. These are the conditions being laid out. Okay, I don't think they're going to opt to go for those. No, but this, I, I appreciate that they're clarifying this is the explicit goal, to wipe all of them out. Yeah. Why? I mean, I guess we'll find out soon. Um, and, and by the way, I, I really liked that flashback scene of Marco, seeing it in like full animation here. Marco's, we're all the hero of our own story, right? And, mm -hmm. and Marco was one of like our main cast guys, seemingly at the beginning, always marked for death. But nonetheless, he was one yeah. of them. It could have been Connie who suffered the same fate. Marco could have been on our team, you know, whatever. Um, and you know, by overhearing just fucking Reiner and his big fat fucking mouth, just if you hadn't yeah. blabbered about, oh, look, we're actually Titan shifters and we gotta make sure that we don't tell anyone we're Titan shifters, Bert. Uh, and Marco is just like, oh, are, why are you yelling about being a titan shifter? This is yeah. like a strange conversation to have in public. Uh, I guess he thought he was safe during during their first fight or whatever. Uh, and, and Marco, his 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 line, as you said, of we haven't even had a chance to talk. As oh god, like I, I'm feeling Annie's trauma. She did not want to do this. Of Reiner, Bert, and Annie, they all together as a team. 
they don't even like honorably kill the man. They strip him of his 3D gear and just throw him to the Titans. Yes, they so just let him get eaten. He was killed by Titans, which I mean, if he'd been murdered by a sword, it would be more suspicious. So this was a right. smart strategic move. But like, I mean, if someone came to me right now and pointed a gun at my head and said, I'm gonna kill you no matter what, I'd try to negotiate with them, you know? Right. Because I feel like I'm the hero of my own little story of my life. But the lack of, of power you feel, if, they're, if they just made up their mind, it's, yeah. it's too late, there's nothing you can do. Deeply, deeply traumatizing uh, experience. It, and it makes about. it, yeah, like, this was the first time that Marco came off as, like, not only a character, but somebody who would have been really nice to have around. Perceptive yeah. as yeah. fuck. He, he wasn't generically nice. He no. was fearing for his existence, and I resonate with that, you know? And, well, and also, like, he literally figures out, he just overhears, right, right. hey, wait a minute, they're talking about shifting titans. I just saw a guy shift into a titan. Yep, yep. They must be titan shifters. Very logical. Faster than anyone <laughs> else figured it out. Like, damn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, hey, we now have full answers about Marco. Rip to that boy. Um, but uh, so on the, on the conversation between Bert and Armin that we're having here now, uh, Bert really has donned a whole new persona, a little bit like Reiner, kind of a, Reiner being literally crazy, uh, this right. being a major component of why he does what he does. Uh, Bert here, not the same, but, but basically finds total resolve in this battle. And, yeah. you know, again, not to shit on Isayama or anything, but like you feel Bert's character really changing from how it's been presented up to this point. Yeah. Was that planned? Was it decided now? Eh, whatever, who cares? And now he's not only confident, I'm going to defeat you, Armin. There's no room for negotiation. These are the points. I'm not going to cower and hide like the last time we saw him and freak out and be so scared of Mikasa. He actually specifically 1v1s Mikasa and at the very least holds himself like pretty darn well with swords against Mikasa. That I don't is, think that can be overstated. Noteworthy. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's impressive. She is a literal superhero, you know, level powers, ninja right. skills or whatever. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think right after that, Mikasa is like, you know, pushed off of Bert, and I believe it's at this point that he goes Colossal Titan mode, and we see it's a nuke. This is right. the most, Reiner talks about how he has the most amount of power out of any of them, via being the Colossal Titan, I suppose, and, uh, you know, the, the power of being really big alone is, is a good one, but this additional nuke skill, you can see how this could be very useful in, uh, right. in a lot of situations. Such as this one. Such as this there one. it was. And this is where I think Hanji gets really hurt bad. Like, her squad gets, yeah. gets butt-fucked. I, I bet this is where that, that guy who's been hanging out with Hanji for like a full season and a half, he's been alive. I think we've reached the end of his story, if maybe, I had to guess. Maybe. We don't know yet. It's not confirmed. I haven't seen a corpse yet. So, <laughs> so you never know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything with Bert I thought was solid just because, like, he really hadn't been much of a character yet, but taking like that and turning it into like take these little scraps of character he does have and have him like about face on those and try to find resolve is probably yeah. the best you could do with this character at this point to mm -hmm. make it like a thing. I like that they had him interact with a lot of different characters and uh, you know, it, it, it felt like they fleshed him out enough mm. that if he's gonna die here, then we at least could remember him as like a dude beyond just being the colossal titan. You know? Yeah, he, he's really come into his own in this scene, and uh, he has a stage presence that's impressive. Uh, which, which you know, the other characters, they they see him as he's changed so much, he's not the same guy, so mm -hmm. fuck it. That'll be a lot easier to kill him now that he's different. All of their characters, you know, like with Reiner, uh, with really, um, we, I, I do feel that, that Jean is getting a bit more of like, of a, a favorable spotlight treatment. Because when, when Connie and Sasha are like scared to attack Reiner, it's John who's like, steal yeah. yourselves, motherfuckers. This man needs to die. He's an I enemy. I, I have to imagine, going on by the way that these five episodes played out, that mm. Jean might finally get his chance in the spotlight Think. sometime soon. And the reason for that is that uh, well, who we lost in this in this Yeah, battle. well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, the yeah. suspense is killing me. Um, so, I mean, this is where we, we break off to, uh, uh, like, the, the 1v1 fight of Eren versus Colossal Titan uh, begins to happen now, which really is more like, uh, you know, 5'9 versus 6'2, uh, this kind of battle between these two. <laughs> Oh! 
What is and he just gets demolished. He tries to hold him back, and for a split second, it looks like Eren might be able to do something against this guy, but he just gets ass-fucked and smashed the fuck out into the wall and is taken out for, like, a good, like, a full episode. He's just unconscious while we wait for him to be narratively relevant again. So, meanwhile, on the other side of the wall, everybody else is also getting fucked. Yeah. Because, and this is one of those moments where... There's a move that happens that's so powerful, actually, that it makes me wonder how, like, this hasn't just already... Why not use this to deal out. with every situation? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, Beast Titan just starts crumbling up boulders into shrapnel and throwing them. And it just wipes out the whole front line of uh, Irwin's troops. All the houses, horses, and people just completely blasted away in an instant. And you know the worst thing about this? It's how good of a time he is having doing it. Because, oh, I, yeah. oh we've, we've, it. we've now learned a little bit more about him. That's the Beast Titan, and his name is War Chief Zeke. First of all, I love everything about that name. That's the coolest sounding name. He's got the coolest design. I fucking love this guy. I'm all in on the Beast Titan, except he kind of is the worst person we've seen so far <laughs> in the series. Because he... He explicitly, he has a mantra, right? When you're out murdering people as a war chief has to do, you gotta find fun in your job. You know, in any job, you could you could look at the positive side. So he likes to play baseball as he goes. Yeah. Like, one of the episodes is called, like, The Perfect Game, or some shit like that. Motherfucker is just murdering people by the dozen. Pitching with The Perfect Game. And he's like, oh, I gotta have fun while I'm doing it. Gotta crush these rocks, spray kill everybody, and, and have fun. Yeah. I, I don't know if this was intentional, by the way, but um, well, considering the, his lanky orangutan the particularly arms. Particularly the way that he says yeah. he has to have fun, it's like he stops himself from getting angry. Because he's like, mm, as mm. he's throwing rocks at the people and um, he sees them continue advancing. Because mm. uh, this is like after Irwin's like riled them up and, yeah, and yeah. he's been throwing the rocks for a while. But he sees him advancing and he gets like pissed off that they're continuing to fight back. And he's like, this is why I hate these crew. Like he really hates humans. So there's like this deep yes, abiding yes. hatred of humans guiding his actions. But then he kind of stops himself and is like, oh yeah, I should be having, like I got to remember to have fun on the job. You, you got to have like, fun with it. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, I was just saying that like, um, like physiologically, he has very long, you know, orangutan kind of looking arms, which when you're pitching, long arms are a strategic advantage. So he seems kind of built for, for just this kind of thing. So yeah. I appreciate Catapult those kind of arms. details. Yeah, so, so that was cool. But uh, so his opposition, we're really getting like the Irwin Levi's with this guy as well. Um, and like our recruits. It's, it's the fodder versus the beast titan arc led by the, the hypest hype machine in the game, Erwin, yeah. who, like, their little logistical detail is this guy's trying to kill the horses so they can't escape, blah, blah, blah. This is the setup. Right. Um, and they realize they can't just wait and get wiped out. They need to do something to give Levi a chance. Levi's yeah. their only hope against this guy. Uh, so like, Erwin just whips so, everybody up. So, okay, to so, charge. so if I'm not mistaken, like, yeah. So Erwin and all his men, which is like the vast majority of the people they've brought with them. Yeah, correct. Um, they are in front of the wall in like this little sort of town area. Like there's a bunch of houses beyond the wall. Yeah, um, yeah. Like hiding out amongst there. And there's just a flank of titans coming. Mm -hmm. So I assume that their plan was wait for titans to advance and then start fighting them. But instead what happens is Titans just remain at a distance and he just starts throwing rocks and just fucking demolishing. So, I mean, nobody could run that way because there's giant Titans in every right. direction. Yeah. And it's basically like the second that they realize that this is even possible, mm. they're like, oh, well, we're completely fucked. Like, there's yeah. literally nothing yeah. we can do about the fact that it's just going to wipe us out with fucking rocks from and, you know, a distance. I, I was saying to myself that, like, oh, uh, the Beast Titan's being very smart because he is standing out in the field where there are no trees where a... Titan, or where, you know, a 3D maneuver gear can do anything to get near to him. Uh, that will, oh, but I love the way it was handled. Okay, let's just get to the chase. Erwin, the hype machine, just convinces all the fodder. We've, we've just got to make our last we, stand we in had, charge. We had our new bull cup boy who has joined Marlo, the team. Marlo, Marlo. he gives a, he's like trying to encourage the other recruits who are like terrified. Mm -hmm. He's like, come on, how can you be like so afraid? And the guy's just like on a nihilistic downward spiral. He's like, none of this right. means anything. It all sucks. And Erwin's like, yeah, pretty much. 
But what are you going to do? Lay, lay down like a bitch or are you going to run in there and try to do something, you know? Like, I mean, it's a little bit Star Troopers-y of, uh, come on, you son of a bitches, did right. you want to live forever? Ah! Exactly. Well, the whole show is like that, I think. Well, I mean, when you're a soldier, you're you're designed to be fodder. You've signed your life away to be a tool for, you know, the military to use. And right now, the most effective use of their lives. Erwin's speech is pretty darn great here. You're going to die one day. Why not use your life? To, to fight these motherfuckers that are trying to kill your boys. And uh, sure, you'll be dead, but let your legend, let your story be carried on by the survivors who you are protecting right now with your actions. Given the situation, it's the most positive way you could possibly look at it. So the, the plan here is they charge, Levi strategically uses, this is brilliant, I love this out. I didn't even think about this until now. I had said that like, there's no way that Levi can get to him, there's no trees. But the row of fucking titans that's surrounding them is the perfect little swingy thing isn't he can it, use to get there. Isn't it just great that the titans decided to stand at a perimeter equidistant where he could exactly reach them and go one by one across the line? The only thing I find like hard to believe about that is like that conveniently the, the titans would be close enough together right. for them to get through. But on the other hand, if you think about it, they need to be close enough together so that no troops could like slip through. Sure. So I, I don't really have any complaints Good about this particular yeah. thing. Like sure, Zeke could have ordered them to charge and attack him as well, but I, I think it, it worked well, and as a set piece, it delivers. And so uh, on the charge, Zeke is just doing his thing. They know they're gonna get mowed down, and so it happens. Erwin himself mowed the fuck down. Uh, fucking Marlo. Like every single character who'd survived, even a you know one any of these backgroundy characters, is in this charge, getting mowed down. Wait, so did did Erwin die here? Well, I mean, we see him get completely fucked. We don't, we, you know, some characters do survive the charge miraculously. So uh, we don't know for sure. We haven't had the dramatic reveal of the body yet, which means yeah. there's a good chance he'll have a dramatic last word at least. Possible, yeah. Other important note. The, the, the little hot potato of the syringe that can be used to turn someone into a titan as long as they're not it's dead. Just sitting around. Is Levi specifically has it. He's been yeah. entrusted with it and he's nearby, so. And uh, the, also the, the one recruit who, uh, is, who was panicking is the one who survives. Um, yeah, the whole battle. <laughs> I, was, poor I was wondering if he might be the one who ends up with the Titan serum. If not Maybe. Levi. I mean, but, it would be useful. Uh, Levi, well. just with his uh, gear alone, because they kind of are like almost suggesting, mm -hmm. like, it's almost like Irwin's telling Levi, hey, inject yourself with this, mm -hmm. become a Titan. But, uh, I mean, Levi just goes and fucking... Well, hang on. There's one other element of the strategy that I love, which is they're... I almost thought this was sad to see. All they're doing is they're charging is shooting their smoke signals. They just keep mm -hmm. doing it over and over. And I was thinking, at the time, I stupidly was thinking, well, this doesn't make any sense. Like, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to block anything. He can just shoot en masse. He's not even aiming. What's the point? There was a point. So that Levi had the fucking cover of smoke. Yes. So that he could sneak the fuck in there. Un unseen by and Zeke. And he fucking fucks up Beast Titan pretty bad. This animation cut of Levi, oh my god, he'd been entrusted with the deaths of his commander and all his boys. Levi's got one mission in life to kill the fucking Beast Titan. The animation spikes to a fucking 11 for this sequence. I'd seen this before, just as people talk about, you know, cool Sakuga from the show. Right. But seeing it in context with the with the music and knowing the, the stakes that are on the line, oh my god, this was like the best singular hype moment in the show, probably. As Levi's just unleashing okay. fucking Naruto skills. Oh my god, it was the fucking wind scar on this motherfucker. It was the sickest shit I've ever seen in my life. And he fucking wins! He cuts that motherfucker out of there and he literally beats him. God, that was fucking sick. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. I remember him dragging him out. Is Beast Titan dead or is he keeping him? He, he specifically says, I can't kill this motherfucker yet. Right. Oh, there's, there's a great cut. He pulls Zeke out. He's got him helpless. I think his arms might have been cut off. You know, we know they'll regrow. Yeah. But there's a shot of him. He sticks his sword in Zeke's mouth. So he's got him helpless. There's a cut where we just cut to like a shot of like a line of blood going like which we know is Levi's blade just sticking into the back of his fucking head because he knows it's not going to kill him. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, I'm not one for torture. I don't love Redo of Healer. Not my favorite show of all time. Right. But when you got a motherfucker who was uh, Levi's line of like, you were having a lot of fun like just 30 seconds ago, motherfucker. Ah, yeah. Fucking what's that, what's that thing Naruto did when he put the wind element into the Rasengan? I never got that far. It was the wind Rasengan thing he did, this <laughs> motherfucker. God, it was so fucking sick. 
oh, Levi, he's a good, it, it, it's Levi, sure he's got the Naruto skills. It's Levi's sense of duty and feeling the weight of the lives placed on his shoulder that really sells this as like an emotional high point of the series. And now I'm like, okay, I get why everybody loves Attack on Titan so much. <laughs> I'm starting to understand <laughs> where the hype is coming from. Um, well, and then we go to one of the emotional low moments in the series, not long after. <laughs> Levi! After all this praise, I just gave <laughs> Levi. What happens, Digi? Tell us what happens, please. Well, they're fighting the Colossal Titan, and... Uh, oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, that does happen. Erwin just gets saved. Erwin gets saved, is the point I'm saying, by the fucking... That, that, that crawling motherfucker, literally, after Levi, sacrificed all these thousands of lives to save fucking... Er, to, you know, to, to kill Zeke. The, the motherfucker just snatches them away. He's alive. He escapes. He's literally okay. Right. It was all pointless. It was all fucking pointless. All this animation. All the people who died. He failed his one fucking mission. It's, Levi's it's Jujutsu fair. Kaisen all over again. <laughs> it, it is like that. But I, it's working well this time. And, and Levi's impotent because now he had killed all the Titans. There's nothing to swing on. He can't right. catch up to him. He's just like, no, you, you don't understand. My mission was to kill him. That was, everything was about killing that guy, and I let him go. I cannot fucking believe this motherfucker let Zeke go. This was the biggest fuck-up in the history of fuck-ups. Every, every good thing I felt while watching this immediately turned negative as, as we got to Zeke being stolen. Okay, I'm sorry. There's just a lot of feelings going yeah, on in my heart yeah. about this scene. Uh, well, okay. That was intense. Yes. This is also intense. Equally intense, it, uh, Continually intense. Mm -hmm. Never-ending intensity for this particular <laughs> half of the season. Armin figures out uh, that when the Colossal Titan does stuff, mm. it reduces its body mass. So, There's some scientific properties tied into their powers. Yeah, yeah so like, yeah. well, we, we know that when they, when they do hardening, they're moving parts of their body to that spot, mm. it seems. Mm. So I would guess that, you know, the same is true of the steam. When they launch out the steam, it's literally releasing part of their body mass, and thus... The longer that Colossal Titan keeps doing that to prevent people from getting close while they fight, the sh smaller he gets. His little arms shrink up. He's, he's getting, turning into a skinny not legend. Not arm day at all. By the way, I, I just, just point of order, like the Titans literally do come out of nowhere. So it, it's not like it would have to be this way. I would find it totally believable that the magic produces the steam the same way it produces the body mass of the Titans. Okay, but there's some scientific process behind it at, yes. at least. So, okay, we've accepted Losing that games. premise. That is the scientific process. He's turning. He's going from bear mode to otter mode, which yeah. for some is an upgrade. Well, he uh, is. I'm trying to remember exactly the ploy of. Well, Ar Armin specifically says, "You guys go deal with some of the. Th I think it was with Reiner or something." Yeah, that's right. Everybody on the team, go right. deal with Reiner. Me and Aaron alone will fight Bert. We've got a plan. Mm -hmm. And the plan is, it's, uh, it's well... It's not a great plan. <laughs> well, it was Armin, an okay plan. Armin is... I can't remember exactly how he actually, like, defeats the Colossal Titan. I just remember how he... I'll tell you. I'll tell he, you. I just can't get the image out of my head. I know, the, I know. Uh, taco meat version uh, of Armin. <laughs> the the uh, flame-broiled... Coal fired. Okay. Uh, Armin just has the gambit of we will just bait out Bert by having him turn up the heat because I've noticed when he goes Colossal Titan and emits heat, he can't move. So it's a very simple gambit. We'll have someone aggress him continually so he focuses attention there and while distracted, we will strike. That's all there is to the plan. It's very simple. In the actual execution, though, I, Armin says, like, okay, we, we can do this. I will be the distraction. I'm a coward. I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about it, everybody. No yeah, need to be concerned says, about me. He throws up the biggest imaginable death flag he by sure saying, does. have I ever told a lie to you, Aaron? Like, Ooh, which, I'll come back alive. Have I ever lied to you? You know, point of order, he has lied. He's, he's manipulated. Yeah. He's a well, strategist. Well, literally after he dies, Aaron's just like, you know what? I should have seen this coming because yeah, yeah. he has, in fact, lied to me. Yeah, then, like, right? That's what I was lies. saying. Like... <laughs> Okay, so the, the plan is simply, Armin will attach himself to the fucking, to the bone matter. The, so the, the, there's a little thing of like, oh, no one could attach before. Armin deduces, because they were hooked into the, the meat that turns the steam. You gotta hook into the bone itself. Okay, he does that, that's fine. Good that's, observation. That's what it was. And he is just able to hang on, trying to pull himself in, while Bert turns up the heat all the way. And at the same time, they're like, okay, Aaron's gonna help us. We see Aaron is down there in Titan form, not moving, just stuck on the ground. 
Uh, in actuality, that is, while there's a big blast he, and there's steam. He basically used yeah. a substitution jutsu here. That's true, in our in our Naruto uh, uh, theming here. He he just, you know, he, we know this is a power, he just did it a second ago, so it all makes sense. Which is, I bet narratively, yeah, Isayama thought like, okay, we'll have him do this right now, so that, you know, it's in the consciousness of the viewers, this is a thing that our Eren just did, so we can use it again strategically. Which he does, he, he hardens, and he as a human escapes, and while Armin is just charging it on Bert's face with the heat turned up all the way, uh, and the moment where he's like, okay, I have now complete, we, the, the shots of Armin being melted, his whole yeah. body, his fucking, his clothes, his hair, his it's, skin. It's very evident that he is dying. He is will dying. Be dead. He is absolutely uh, not having a good day There's anymore. No question throughout. And, uh, and Eren, outside of his Titan, just with his 3D gear, uses the opportunity where, because, you know, the whole thing was Bert thinks that Eren is still Titan mode right. down there. That's the stone version. He turned off the heat. Eren is up there and fucking, he just beats him. Gets he just cuts him the fuck out. Literally what he wanted to do in episode four when he faced off with it That's the very the first time and got blasted away by the steam. If, if if that very first battle could have been won with the same strategy. Yeah, that's true. All Armin true. had to do was get burnt to a crisp. The strategy and... did require a human sacrifice, though, yeah. which, uh, by the way, I noticed this episode, this is the final one we watched, episode 17, was called Hero. Yes. And I was just like, oh. Well, and the whole time I was oh. like, who's going to be an hero? Until, <laughs> until, you got the, uh, until you got Armin's line where he makes it very clear. He was a real hero. Well, and there were so many people with death flags going, like everybody could die in this yeah, battle. Like yeah. we're at a point in the story where it would make equal amounts of sense for anybody other than Aaron to die pretty much. The only characters who weren't majorly throwing up death flags were Connie, because he's still not doing anything. He's so far like in the background, you don't think he's gonna die. Right. Same with Sasha. And actually Armin, because mm -hmm. leading into this battle, um, when, uh, when uh, Erwin is throwing up mm. his death flags, he's, telling Armin about how like you're like su super trusted um he I don't remember if this was in this set of episodes or the last one or if it was like right mm, at the start it was this where where he Irwin keeps just asking him for plans basically yeah and in this he specifically puts him in charge like of the plan right. which by the way at the beginning was when he came up with the search the walls that was like yes. an Armin commander moment thing so it's like uh yeah there's this idea that Irwin trusts Armin to be someone who has lots of good ideas yeah, and will help yeah. him strategize so it's almost like he's setting him up to fill his shoes. Yeah, so for yeah. them to both go down immediately one after another. Um, and you have this whole scene where Jean is, uh, basically Armin says to Jean, I don't have any ideas right now. Mm -hmm. You need to lead. And right. he says, okay, let's do this. And they Jean's do a good that. like field commander. Yes, Jean's like, look, I, I'm good at like understanding what we need to do immediately, but not at understanding like how to come up with a whole scheme right. that's you. So right. like, they have that back and forth. They're and finally Armin... carving out a niche for Jean, I feel. Yeah. yeah. And and Armin's gone this whole like I like that he goes a long time just like panicking that he can't think of anything. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. I don't know, it seems like we're fucked, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. until he finally notices the diminishing flesh thing and that's when he's like, All right, I got yeah. something. Uh, but now he's gone. So like Jean is now the only leadership role left. Like, the only person who has had a bunch of people talk about how he's a leader the whole show is, uh, that, that isn't know, dead. I should have got the image up. I can't get that fucking vision of Armin's fucking charred, broiled ass gross. out of my fucking mind. Oh my god, that was fucked up. One of the worst, and he just... He, he just deals with it. He just deals with being charred, oh, broiled. He dies in the most badass... Manner it's he it's actually could. it's very similar to that to that one weird animation of that guy who goes, "Bro, I hate my family. I want you to grill me. Oh yeah, I want yeah. you to grill me." It was basically Armin's arc here. <laughs> well, you know what, man? I just got to tell you, that's a really nice grill you got there. That's a really nice grill you got there, man. It's nice, right? It's really nice. Can I ask you something? Yeah, man. Pretty serious. Yeah, of course. Will you grill me on this grill? Wow. Is that crazy? No. Mm -hmm. Is that crazy? You know, you know, well, you know, I, you know, I, well, you know, I wouldn't even be one to say, really. Well, 
Well, I mean, we're basically at the end here. Yeah. Oh, this... oh actually, sorry, one other point. There's the whole, uh, the guys are fighting Reiner. Reiner's back on his feet. Oh, there's the really funny moments, because Reiner had gotten his actual head blown off, where right. he's healing back, and he's, like, bald, and has, like, a silly looking, ha ah, he's bald, that's funny to me. And, uh, you know, his whole Did face Reiner is... Did Reiner survive this battle so far? Is he, he still alive? He, I don't think we saw him die, but we get the dramatic moment of, um, oh, we have to get inside, because our, our B squad, they're taking care of Reiner with their thunder rods. Oh my god, Sasha missed hers, or Connie missed hers, we need one more. And Hanji is back on her feet, she shows yes. up, she gets the final blow. I, they, actually, they were blowing his jaw off so right. that Mikasa could shoot through to the through back. Through the inside the into right. the back, yeah. And, and they do successfully do that, I believe. That's right. Uh, we see Reiner get blown out the back, and uh, like, Bert, uh, Zeke, and Reiner all got cut the fuck out of a Titan. Zeke has been retaken by his boys, it seems like. Uh, but Bert and Reiner, as far as we can tell, are just like defeated. They're down for the count, uh, or in our in our possession right now. Okay. Bert specifically had like all his limbs cut off by by Aaron. So, um, right. I mean, this is where we leave things. We're in a really traumatic place now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, I basically when I started watching Attack on Titan way back when it first began. Mm -hmm. I thought this whole show is going to be about the lead up to this blonde kid dying. Mm, that mm. was my very first impression. Because it's like you got three main characters, two boys and a girl. Only one of them's going to get the girl. One of them's got to go. Uh, that was my, my very first thought. Right, so, right. So I, Armin always had like definitely going to die at an emotional moment yeah. written all over him. It's just a matter of when. Um, but I got to give it to him. Like... He had a great arc over the series. Yeah. Continually yeah. impressive character. Like, he just gets tons of moments. Mm -hmm. And, like, without having to be badass, like most of the other characters In are. his own particular brainy right. kind of way. Yeah. Um, and his death is badass as well. And it comes at a moment I just wasn't expecting it just because, like, there were so many other characters that I expected to die then. Yeah. And not necessarily him, aside from, like, right when he says the thing that makes you know he's going to die. But. but again, we shouldn't forget that that syringe that can save someone. I know Armin is, I mean, is it theoretically possible? No, no. He's a, him. he's nothing left. This is just uh, he'll, but he'll I dissolve like, to the touch problem. His, his body shape is still there. Like, his right. head shape is still there. I, I just wonder if this is, you know, where they're going with things. Uh, because, but I mean, where, Where's Erwin? It, it, that needle has to be used on someone. There's right. a limited selection of who it could be used on, and it will be. It, it's got to happen. Is there any additional, no, there's no additional Titans in this picture that we could say, oh, that's got to be them. Uh, yeah, no, they were, they, were, they were wise about that. Um, I, I guess I'll just reiterate what... I'm so glad we watched five episodes to the entire battle. This is the battle. perfect place to have yeah. cut off, yeah. Oh, um, my God. The, the, and the, like the tagline at the end of the episode is like they won the battle, but like they lost even more than they won. Right. Which I actually don't agree with because they still. Irwin's said I'm replaceable from the start. They've lost precious friends. That's all true. But they still have Eren, and right. they won the battle, and they've retaken. It's hard the wall. to know as well because we've never known any more about Beast Titan's team. If there's like yeah. more, is he one commander or general? Who else is That's in his the village thing. That's or things the thing. like that? Um, Though, the kind of the way that this played out and the way that the previous arc played out where it seemed like the conspiracy turned out to be bigger than the people who we thought were in charge of right, it, I right. think the same thing is going to be true on, in their case as well, that like, not only are they a smaller faction than we thought, mm, but mm. like they're under you know advisement of something even bigger. By the way, I think you had said <laughs> at some point as we were watching, maybe this was last time or something, uh, yeah. you were just like pointed at Zeke before you knew him, and you were like, "That, that's Armin's dad." <laughs> and by, I'm, I don't feel bad spoiling you. They were killed by the military police. That is not Armin's dad. God damn it! I know that much at least. They were in fact killed by the military right. police. I, uh, I enjoyed that theory, though. A anything could have been possible, you know? Who knows? Who knows? I think I might have even, like, this morning, when I started up the show again, like, looked yeah. at him and gone, I wonder if that guy could be Arvin's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, L little spoiler there, but hopefully we'll find out. I mean, we we've I don't know when this happens, but we've got to dive into the backstory of this group, like, immediately. I'm so curious so. about all of them. And, and by the way, I mean, I, I didn't even, like, think of this till now. We've now captured Bert and Reiner. 
They've right. got very important information we got to get out of them before they go full Annie mode and turn into a crystal person or something. So yeah. hopefully they can counter that measure once again. Or just kill them, I guess, if you want to. Just fuck them. Can't I don't let them know. escape I don't again. know what they're doing with them or if they're even alive still, actually. Maybe they'll become friends again. Think they're redeemable? Is that no. possible? <laughs> no. no. I don't That's, think any uh... of them like each other very much anymore. What an, what an amazing uh, whole little arc this was. Best battle in the show so far. Tons of like logistical stuff happening. Some of the best animation I, in yeah. the show. And it was, most importantly, it was just what I wanted yeah. after watching season two. Yeah, like, yeah. This is exactly, like, I wanted these confrontations. I wanted these character beats. These were the I, titan battles we dreamed of. I wanted to learn the background information I did. And yeah, it was uh, to see a... Full scale battle where both sides go in seemingly equally matched, um, and in the end they kind of are. They, yep, they basically yep. were. It was a f kind of a fair fight in terms yeah. Attack on Titan terms. As much as it can be. So uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And we've it, done it. We've retaken Wall Maria. It's yeah. it's back. We got our hometown back. Shishigan Shina, whatever it is. If uh, anything, like. The this basement! Is... I forgot about the basement! Yeah. It's right there! We well, can go there the immediately! Thing. That's the thing. It feels like this, it feels like this story, um, like anything beyond this point, mm -hmm. is like past the point of anything you could have expected. Yeah, yeah. Because like, this is everything we had set up for. It's mm -hmm. like fighting these guys and going to the basement. Everything beyond here is a complete question mark as right. to what it means. Will the basement hype, could it possibly live up to all the hype we've been building to? I think we're about to learn, dog. I like I one, two like episodes? we're 10 seconds away from learning. <laughs> I think we're like ah! in the vicinity of tomorrow on K. That, you know, one last point, like we're feeling so much happiness and joy. The one moment where before the charge, like Erwin is like, God, I came out here. I knew I was crippled. Like, I just wanted to know so bad. It's all yeah. I ever wanted. And Levi's was like, give up your dreams. You're a fucking soldier. Yeah. Die for the country, you motherfucker. And he's like, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, great. I feel his pain. What if I died? What about the heroes who are watching that Attack on Titan? That is probably Irwin's best character moment, really. Just like, yeah. uh, well, you yeah. know, you you threw away everyone else's life for your dream. Obviously, you have to throw your life away for it too. Well, I, I know this is a, a you know a, a, a sad bait, but like, what what of the heroes out there reading this manga, reading the anime? Who, who died in real life before they could find out what was in the basement. Just because, you know, serialization yeah. takes time. What, you know, these things happen. What if we die going up the stairs from tripping on the snow and don't and find we out never see, the fucking basement? It, it could happen. It could happen. Let's hope it doesn't. And you'll find out immediately tomorrow on the final day of Titan Week. <laughs> Will you survive? Now it's your last chance You'll to only get survive the shirt. if you buy the shirt or if you give <laughs> us money on threat. Subscribe Star so you can see us talk about Attack on Titan Middle School. <laughs> this, uh, sp we have to release that after this episode. Okay, we can do that. Uh, but yeah, why? For why do we have to do that? Because the there's jokes in it that spoil this this episode. Shit, maybe I didn't get that far. Okay, well, we'll, we'll find out. Watch the episodes, and we'll see you on the next episode of Titan Week Cantant. Bye.